No, no, Mr. Tepper, I have to do a podcast. I don't want the job. Thank you very much. <laughs> you are locked on NFL. Your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's going on, football fans, and welcome in to another episode of Locked On NFL, your daily podcast, breaking out all the biggest stories around the National Football League every single Monday through Friday. Here is a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Don't forget, you can always subscribe and follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss the latest episodes. And we appreciate you, as always, making Locked On NFL your first listen of the day every day. And a big shout out to all the everydayers out there who make it happen. It is Tuesday, so you've got Luke Braun at Luke Braun NFL on Twitter. Myself, Ross Jackson at Ross Jackson. Nola on your favorite social media. Just turned down the Carolina Panthers coaching job, and I have the feeling I won't be the last <laughs> one. Today's episode of Locked on NFL is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the promo code Locked on NFL for $20 off of your first purchase. Uh, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So, Luke, today on tap for us, of course, we get to our yike and our like, including Jalen Hurts making his MVP case. We're also going to take a look at a couple of teams we're going to pour it out for, including the uh, Los Angeles Chargers, who look like there's going to be that long awaited head coaching search on the way. But, Luke, there's one coaching search that's ongoing already, and it is the Carolina Panthers coaching search as they move on from head coach Frank Reich. And I cannot say this more clearly. There will not be a less desirable head coaching <laughs> yeah. opening this offseason than the Carolina Panthers in the absolute crap storm that they have created for their organization. It is a dysfunctional place. There's a lot of stuff coming out. I don't know what is true and what is not and what's all rumor or just, you know, he said, she said. Hmm. So we don't have to go deep into it, but there's stuff about, I'll just say discord in the organization, people not on the same page about things. Um, it's so rough, man. If you just look at like the, like since David Tepper took over, there's, there's a, a tweet from Greg Rosenthal today. Uh, yep. Between his MLS and NFL teams, David Tepper has fired four head coaches in the last 18 months. Yep. This is how you Browns it. And I'm not talking <laughs> about the Browns that won a playoff game in 2020. I'm talking about the no, 2016, no. 2017 disaster Browns. I'm talking like this is how you become the league's next laughing stock. This is how you make your fans endure a decade of, of horror shows is by not sticking to things when they don't work out immediately. Like I get it with Matt rule. It was probably time two and a half years in, but Tepper got there and lasted a year and a half with Ron Rivera and said, no, I want to get my own guy. His own guy was Matt rule two and a half years. Now you have a half a year with Frank Reich. And this was supposed to be the build. When you made that trade with Chicago to go get Bryce young, to go get your, your number one overall pick you, you were making a declaration that was okay. We're going to take this proven offensive mind in Frank Reich. We're going to take this number one overall quarterback, this prospect that we've hand picked out of every quarterback in college. We like him the best. We're going to put these guys together and this is going to be our plan for the next 10 years. You got 12 games into it. <laughs> That's just not the way to find success in the league. Look, the Panthers have won seven games twice since David Tepper bought them. Twice they have won seven games. The rest have been five win seasons and this catastrophe. Yeah. So, I, I don't see this getting better before it gets worse for them because now whoever takes over is going to have a totally different vision than the guy who was in the room when they selected Bryce Young. And I know there's rumors around that maybe it was more Tepper forcing the issue with, with uh, Bryce Young over CJ Stroud or whatever. I don't care. You had a plan, right? You had some kind of vision for what the parent Panthers were supposed to be. But now a new vision is going to come in, is going to have to take whatever scraps of the old vision they can get and build something new. And guess what? It's not going to work right away. Yep. So next time it's week 12 and you're one of the worst teams in the league because somebody ha has to work with ingredients they're not used to and did not select, are you going to fire that guy too and start the whole process over? Or can we be a little bit patient with someone for once? Yeah, that's that that is that for me right there, Luke, is the bottom line for this whole thing is the lack of patience. 
by this organization. We watch teams struggle for years and years with the same head coach only to try to figure it out, get it all done, believe in continuity, believe in cohesion, sometimes to a fault. But at least like in those. Taylor. Yeah, yeah. It, Terrible it, first year. Yep. Quarterback got hurt. Worst, one of the worst teams in the league. But you stuck with it. And yeah. you, you, you built something with focus. Yep. And, and you looked at the Indianapolis Colts who, you know, moved on from Frank Reich and then went to the Jeff Saturday uh, uh, experiment and everything like that. Like Frank Reich has consistently now been scapegoated for these bad teams and these bad organizations making bad decisions. And Carolina Panthers fans deserve so much better than this. Like let's for a moment, think back to like, imagine Julian Council right now over at Locked on Panthers talking oh, about Julian, Cam Newton, right? Like those <laughs> oh, days, yeah. the fun, you know, glory like days. 2016, of the Carolina Panthers. yeah. Like this is not an organization that hasn't tasted success before. They appeared in a Super Bowl, right? And so when yeah. you go out there and then you start making these kinds of moves where you're going to continuously put yourself into this perpetual cycle of now you're into the coaching search hell cycle, which is even yeah. worse than the quarterback hell cycle. Like it, it's just, you're not going to get there. And, and look, I get that people believe that there's going to be something appealing about this job, but Joe Marino over at Locked NFL Scouting put out a tweet that I loved where he basically talked about you get to work with David Tepper, you have absolutely no draft assets, and you have an outlier at quarterback. Congratulations, it's the greatest job available. <laughs> that is that that's the way that I look at it because I was never high on Bryce Young. And I will say that what I did say on this very show mm. is that. I'm not high on Bryce Young. I don't think Bryce Young is going to pan out. Yes, it's the size. And the only reason why people tell you not to talk about the size is because the size does actually, in this case, have a big impact on somebody's ability to be able to translate to the NFL. And so everybody said, no, don't talk about that. Don't talk about that. But it's the biggest reason why there's like three of those guys of his stature that have ever panned out in the NFL. And I don't think that there's anything about Bryce Young that should make you believe that he's going to be that outlier, that exception, at least at this point. Hopefully he proves me wrong. But I did say on the show, I don't believe that he's going to be that guy. But the coaching staff that they set up for him in Carolina with Frank Reich, with Josh McCown, with these other guys who are all gone now, by the way, Josh McCown also let go, Do Staley yeah. over the running back coach let go, that this would be the coaching staff that could get it out of Bryce Young, that could do what they needed to do to get Bryce Young to elevate to that number one overall status. And they failed to do that. The one thing it's, that they needed to do. It, it, I think it's bad problem solving. Yeah, I get it. Like you watch the Carolina Panthers. That offense was clearly going nowhere fast. And I don't know if that's because they didn't trust Bryce Young and Frank Reich is just kind of falling on that grenade. I don't know if it's because they're actually secretly a whole bunch of really bad offensive minds, even though Josh McCown was in head coaching conversations a year ago. Uh, and Deuce Staley is very well respected mm -hmm. as a running backs coach as well. So. Maybe that's all fake. And those guys are actually just bad at their jobs. I don't know what the problem is, but I think they've done so much damage. They've cut off their nose despite their face um to like to the the future of the organization the future is like him or not the future is bryce young whether that works out or not and you you, you gave up the future for bryce young he has to be the future now you traded yep. the future for that future and it's just bad problem solving to look at an issue which is okay the offense looks like it is poorly designed it is not designed yep. for success yeah i think the, you did a poor job of diagnosing that issue and maybe the issue is we don't trust Bryce Young. Well, how do you fix that? Right? Do you mm -hmm. just fire someone else and make and say, look, I'm doing something about it? Or do you try to fix the problem? And I think a lot of NFL teams with the pressures externally that come out uh, from, from fans and media and the business side of all of that and from the owner, uh, which is really where I'm levying this ac this this criticism, mm -hmm. that pressure causes you to find really bad solutions to problems. If you don't think Bryce Young is reading out the plays right, coach him up. Coach him. him. Right. And right. if, hey, if Josh McCown failed to do that, if Frank Wright failed to do that, then then sure. Mm -hmm. But this, hard to do that in a few months. Yeah, yeah. And certainly easier to coach with a head coach than without one. Uh, we'll see how it goes. And I will say that a screen on fourth down with the game within range uh, against the Tennessee <laughs> Very Titans, probably probably didn't help Frank Reich's case. It's what they've been <laughs> that, doing all year. <laughs> that is for sure. Uh, so from one job that is open and is not desirable to one that 
should become open and would be very desirable should the Los Angeles Chargers be ready to move on from Brandon Staley. We got that and much more because we're pouring it out for two teams up next as we continue on with today's episode of Locked On NFL, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time, the best way to get last minute tickets and flash deals. Look, maybe your team is better than you thought they would be. Maybe you just on a whim want to go to a game this weekend. Doesn't even have to be an NFL game, can be anything. Check out Game Time. They've got all kinds of last minute tickets, and it's the best way to find tickets on short notice that aren't price marked up to oblivion. Uh, They also have a way to see a picture of your view so you can make sure that you're not stuck behind a pillar or whatever. And the game time guarantee means that you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. They're that confident that they're the best deal in town. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on NFL for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms apply again, create an account and redeem code locked on NFL L O C K E D O N N F L for 20 bucks off download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, everybody, continue on with today's episode of Locked On NFL. Appreciate all you everydayers out there making Locked On NFL your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget to go and check out History Locked On Sports today, the YouTube page, the first ever national sports 24-7 stream on YouTube. Go and check them out to keep up with everything going on around, and especially the big stories around uh, the NFL, the NBA, MLB, and onward. Appreciate you very much for going to go and check them out. All right, Luke, um... The Los Angeles Chargers should be undergoing a head coaching search. I think they need to move on from Brandon Staley. They are a year late. They should have done it last year. (laughs) They didn't. And now here we are ready to have this conversation post Thanksgiving again. Is it time to pour one out? Not only for the Los Angeles Chargers, but for Brandon Staley as well. Um, yes, (laughs) I, I I don't think Staley survives past black Monday. Obviously the mid season thing. I don't know really what it really does for you unless you want to get like a head start on the coaching search, but there are rules that kind of mitigate that too. So I I'd be agnostic to it, but, uh, on this show, we have poured one out for a few teams. We don't think are going to, uh, make the playoffs. And we've Mm -hmm. done it very early in some cases. Here are our teams so far, the Carolina Panthers, of course, yeah. The Bears, the Packers, the Cardinals, the Patriots, the Giants, the Colts, the Titans, uh, the Commanders, and the Jets. Colts might burn us, but uh, as they are, I think they're sitting in playoff position right now as I started wow. the day. So the uh, Col- Colts might come around, but I think it's time for the Chargers. They're four and seven. And with with that AFC playoff picture, there's like 10 teams in front of them. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of teams that they would have to uh overcome they still have a game against the chiefs mm-hmm. um they still have a lot of they, they've still got some challenging matchups coming up including matchups against the broncos who are yep. have kind of proven themselves to be no slouch and the bills they would probably have to win out go 10 and 7 to to like be able to comfortably make the playoffs maybe yeah. they can lose one and get lucky on tiebreakers i don't see that happening at all here and i think as you look at this brandon staley team uh, since they drafted Justin Herbert, you, you, you want something grim here? Oh boy. They have gone. If you, if you want to talk about playoff appearances and playoff wins is like a, a, a loose barometer for success. Not very precise, but it's something, um, you would have the chargers going blow for blow with the Kirk cousins Vikings, uh, and their ever decaying roster and all the criticisms Oof. there. You've gone blow for blow with Kirk Cousins. You missed the playoffs in 2020, missed him in 2021, made it in 2022, but lost in the first round. And then uh, actually had this year is where they diverged, where the Vikings are on base. Yeah, but not for the right reason. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, that's pretty rough. It's it's been rough for the Chargers. Um, It's not, this is not the Phillip Rivers era anymore. And I, I think that roster is just decayed they need to they they need to bring in real real star power that's not you know an aging khalil mack that's not just kind of doubling down on whatever keenan allen has left in the tank they need to go do something bold and aggressive uh and not get a a defensive minded head coach running an outdated system yes yes imagine that um 
that, sorry, that, that one struck me to my core a little bit there, Luke. Um, I, I do think that like when I look at the, the Los Angeles Chargers, uh, they had every opportunity this past offseason to improve. And they didn't take those swings. And just like we talked about with David Tepper, we have to talk about with ownership over in the Los Angeles Chargers side as well, Spanos family, that we look at like how they didn't go out there and pursue who they should have pursued at head coach Sean Payton uh, going out and fighting. Like you have all of the ammunition that you need to get a top ranked type head coach. You don't have to go out there and get the, you know, the experimental guy or, or, or give somebody their first shot or anything like that. I know Brandon Saylor wasn't necessarily that because he was, he had already had a year under his belt, but uh, I just don't see right now this team being able to do what it needs to do to get in position to be the competitive team that they should be with Brandon Staley at the helm. This team will very likely not even finish top two in its division. I think they will finish just above the Raiders in their division with the Broncos and the Chiefs uh, topping the AFC West. And that's a massive issue for this team. I mean, they are alone in last place in that division right oh, now. Oh, yeah, that's right. They're sitting yeah. at last. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And and I think there's a good chance they do finish last, and they're drafting like top 10 here. It's, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Pour Rip. one out for the Chargers. It's over, and it's time for them to go into yet another rebuild. Hooray. <laughs> I'm sure Chargers fans are very excited for that. Uh, yeah, but yeah. we have some other pouring out that we yes. want to maybe discuss. We want to stay yes. in the AFC West and talk about if the Raiders are a team that we should port. They just suffered a really, really rough, rough loss to Kansas City. They're kind of in a similar spot where there's this glut of AFC wildcard contenders. Five and seven is better than four and seven, but you're still sure. kind of hoping like, can you win out? Um, and they've got a late round rookie at the helm. Yeah, um, I think that's a really interesting one. I don't think I'm ready to pour one out for them just yet, though, if I'm being honest. Um, I think that there's a lot of different things that you there's a lot of different things that you can highlight about why this team shouldn't win moving forward, can't win moving forward and things like that. But they've simply proven to be more competitive than anyone kind of expected them to be at this point. Do I think that they make the playoffs? No. Um, do I think that they only win winnable games moving forward? Yes. But do I think that they're completely done for? No, I mean, like if the Broncos get caught slipping, then all of a sudden the Raiders can kind of sneak in there. So it can be really, really interesting to see how it all how it all pans out. Dropping a game to the Miami Dolphins, dropping a game to the Miami to the Miami Chiefs, to the Kansas City Chiefs. Those are two very different opponents than the New York Jets and the New York Giants, just like we kind of said it was going to be. Uh, but I don't think I'm ready to pour one out for them just yet. Got to pour one out for Marcus Peters though, because that was kind of wild. <laughs> yes, that they just ran. Marcus like, Peters released has him. been released. Uh, yeah. Victor Four writes for the Athletic speculated i mean so he's had a tackling issue all year yeah. and has speculated that maybe it's an effort thing but he did get benched in that chiefs game so mm -hmm. the writing was potentially on the wall there um it, yeah the the raiders i mean obviously they've got an interim head coach thing they're already in this kind of weird state of flux i'm not projecting them to make the playoffs if i had to make a yeah. guess right now that's one thing but i also i don't think i'm ready to pour one out for them because they do still have they've got a chargers game left they've got a colts game left mm -hmm. they've got a game against josh jobs and the vikings left yep. um and they've got the broncos and chiefs that's the last five remaining i think if you can three and two that uh if you can get you could do real well in four and one that again you're sitting you know at that at nine and eight mm -hmm. um and then you hope you get lucky on tiebreakers yeah I, I don't feel great about it yeah they still probably have to win out and steal one against the chiefs but uh yeah i, I think we can hold off maybe one more one more week take one more l right. and then it's over i think though. yeah yeah we might be right back to the uh las vegas raiders yeah. here next week we'll we'll see we'll see where it goes yeah. from there all right uh, coming up next, let's take a look at our yike and our like. This is something Luke and I do every single week on Tuesdays. Something that we like from the week, something that we didn't like, or that we call our yike from the week. And I'm going to lead this off with uh, another quarterback who has had really phenomenal growth in uh, Jalen Hurts and why he right now should be the MVP front runner uh, of the NFL. We got that coming up for you as we continue on with today's episode of Locked NFL, part of Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Today's episode of Locked On NFL is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports book, and it's America's number one sports book for a reason. Part of that reason 
is a whole bunch of really cool promos that they always have going on. So check the FanDuel website uh, if you are already signed up. But if you're not signed up, you can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. $150 in bonus bets if that team wins. But the kicker is you get to pick whatever money line bet you want, and you don't have to give up any points. So pick whatever the strongest favorite of the week is. You can go pick an NBA team as well. Make a $5 money line bet, and assuming there's no crazy ups upset, you get $150 back in bonus bets. That's 30 to 1 odds on whatever money line you want. No deal like it out there. App is super easy to use. They've got spreads, player props, over-unders, all kinds of stuff. It's safe and secure, and they pay out instantly when you win. So go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and sign up there to claim that $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, y'all, wrapping up today's episode of Locked on NFL with our yike and our like. Big thank you to all the everydayers here checking us out, whether you're checking us out via the podcast, wherever you get your podcasts, on the Locked on NFL YouTube page, or the Locked on Sports Today 24-7 stream. We appreciate you very much being here with us. Make sure you go and check that 24-7 stream out, by the way. Super, super cool. Um, Luke, let's get to our yike and our like. Again, we do this every week, what we liked, what we didn't like from the week. And I'd like to start us off with my like. And Luke, you just mentioned FanDuel. Um, our good friends over at FanDuel rightfully have Jalen Hurts as the MVP front runner at plus 150. Behind him is Patrick Mahomes at plus 350. So you get some pretty solid positive odds there. It's all positive odds. But Jalen Hurts right now, the front runner. And I just want to say, I think that it is awesome. It's awesome. Louis DiBiase, one of the co-hosts over at Locked On Eagles, put out a great post uh on social media earlier this week after the um the the uh, philadelphia eagles beat the buffalo bills on uh sunday afternoon the the late slate of games in that big overtime win where he himself ran it in for the touchdown after the defense held uh buffalo to a field goal and one of the things that he mentioned was that he remembered watching the big shootout in the playoffs between the bills and the chiefs josh allen patrick mahomes going crazy and how he felt that there was no way that a guy like jalen hurts would ever be able or would be that year able to hang with those two guys and mm -hmm. in consecutive weeks jalen hurts now in 2023 a couple years later has grown so much that he's knocked off patrick mahomes and josh allen in back to back weeks pretty darn cool now i understand that it's not just a quarterback it's a team league. It's a team game, all that stuff. But really, really cool to see Jalen Hurts as the leader of that team grow to this extent where he's now your MVP front runner. Yeah, a couple of tough uh, uh, tough teams. Um, it's getting tougher in the yep. AFC, which brings me to my like, which is just generally the AFC South. Yeah. How long has the AFC South been that that division that when it's your year to play the AFC South, you're like, oh, great. We get we get the AFC South. We can we can go three and one. Like, how long has that been the case all the way through the Peyton Manning years where, yeah, the Colts were good, but those other three teams, maybe one of them was good and the rest of them were laughing stocks. Um, uh, to the last few years where they've all been going through these disasters and urban Meyer and all that. Well, now you got Trevor Lawrence who has a genuine shot at the one seed in the AFC. Mm -hmm. You have uh CJ Stroud and the Texans absolutely exploding. The future of the Texans looks at so bright right now. They're awesome. Which yeah. I mean, how, how much have I gone at? I, I go at bad teams on this show because I think teams that fail to deliver a quality product for their fans deserve to get flamed on in the media. That's just how I approach this. So I've been very mean to the Texans because Texans fans deserve better. They deserve this. They deserve yeah. being able to watch CJ Stroud slice and dice every single week, even in a game where they're frustrated that they didn't win. You can still look and say, yeah, but our quarterback kind of rocks though. And it feels good. <laughs> uh, Anthony Richardson looked like he was doing great. I know he's hurt. It doesn't, he's, you know, not around yeah. right now, but he'll be back next year. The AFC South looks like it's, it can be such a fun division to watch. For two guys who cover NFC teams, especially, you don't yeah, have to deal with real. that every year. <laughs> um, I'm so excited to watch yeah. the AFC South. Uh, even the Titans. Maybe Will Levis turns into something and they, they're in something of a rebuild. But even if you just call it three or four, three of four teams, that's a lot better than other divisions. Yes, yes. Um, and speaking of that, that that's a beautiful <laughs> transition to my yike because we'll go well, from the AFC. We'll go from the AFC South to the NFC South and simply yike. 
<laughs> Yike. <laughs> Gross. It's so wild to me. I got the question the other day. Does anyone want to win the NFC South? And I'll go a step further. There is no team in the NFC South that presently deserves to win the NFC South. Put the third place AFC South team in their spot on the NFC bracket. That's the way that I see it. Give somebody else the opportunity because none of these teams, the New Orleans Saints, who I cover closely, the uh, Atlanta Falcons, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and obviously not the Carolina Panthers, who are completely out of the conversation. But none of these four teams deserve to win their division at this time. The NFC South is absolutely horrid, and it's so tough to watch. Um, it's just bad. It, it's, it, it's, it stinks because every one of these fans, like we just mentioned about the Houston Texans, they want better for these teams and right now what you're seeing is just sort of this like commitment to mediocrity across the board with all of these all of these nfc south teams and it's just the wildest thing to me when i look at how you have the opportunity to separate in a in a bad division you expect one of those teams to separate in a bad division when they don't and no team is separating themselves in this division right now no team above 500 no team even at 500 anymore it's just it's just bad football, and and it stinks. It stinks to see it in a, a a division where one of these four teams should have been able to separate themselves in the positive side of the conversation as opposed to the negative side. It, it sucks, yeah. When you look at at those teams and you see like, man, this is wide open. It's here for the taking, and nobody goes out and takes it because they've all got too many of their own problems. But mm -hmm. hey, when it comes to that division, that's that's what it comes down to: is who yep. figures their own crap out first. Yeah, who starts uh, beating and, themselves. That's the right, big thing. which is either the Saints or the Falcons because the Buccaneers went into the season fairly unserious and the Carolina Panthers are barely an organization. Right. Um, speaking of, of decaying organizations, my yike goes to Sports Illustrated. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the There was an expose posted at futurism.com uh, detailing a, a lot of their, showing a lot of their work and levying a well-substantiated accusation that Sports Illustrated has created AI-generated content, AI-generated oh, no. bylines and headshots for the quote-unquote writers writing that content. Uh, and they have, when, when asked for comment about this, they immediately deleted all of the bylines and content in question. Oh. Uh, it goes so much deeper than that. I'm, I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time recounting the entire article, but you should read it at futurism.com. Um, sports journalism is an industry that a lot of people want to be a part of. Uh, and, and I've got a lot of my, my criticisms for media and how it's handled. But I think there is this, this there's sort of a sentinel at the gate sometimes. When it mm -hmm. comes to people who want, I get DMs all the time. How do I get into sports, into covering sports? A lot of people want it and a lot of people are yeah. hungry and a lot of people have passion. Um, so it, it makes me see red when yeah. I see that instead of engaging that passion and potentially growing this space, which can be artistic and beautiful and creative, you just decide to let chat GPT do it so that you can sell more ad revenue. Um, they do not deserve your views. They do not deserve your attention. And if if that is indeed the case, because I, they categorically deny all of it, probably should say that. But uh, it, I personally am persuaded that it is true. And therefore, F them, man. That's rough. Just that's it's rough. There's a lot of talent out there. And it yep. sucks that they're being ignored for the sake of chat GPT. And a byline that says that they like food and drink. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. Yes, there's a ton of talent quote, out there. By the way. <laughs> and that's I, I believe you. I believe you. I just think like there's so much talent out there, and there's so many people that want the opportunity that simply don't have the access. And all that they need is good coaching and good leadership. And yeah. And they just and like, there's someone to take a doing, chance on. Right. Yeah. You take a chance. And then, and then if, if somebody's work isn't up to where you want it, coach him, right? This, this is the conversation that we started the show with, with David yeah. Tepper. You know what I mean? Like just, just let it happen. Like invest in talent and invest in young talent and especially in, in, in sports media, uh, especially diversifying sports media because good Lord. Um, I, I'm, right. I've started telling people to do their own thing, to be honest. Yes. A hundred percent. What we do where we have like on locked on, we have, we, we get to say what we want to say and that's beautiful. 
I think if people are going to bend over backwards to try to be a part of an organization that doesn't even want him and wants to replace him with an AI, I say go start your own YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah, man. That's that's how I got here. I got here, and I think I think both of us we both got here by doing our own thing, and everything. So yes, I could not recommend that more for anybody who wants to get into sports media. Go do your own thing, and I promise the right people will find you. And it might be Luke and I. <laughs> Maybe. <Yeah. laughs> All right, we appreciate you very much for coming through for another fantastic episode, illustrious episode of Locked On NFL here on Tuesdays. If anybody wants to do a Chat GPT review of today's episode, please send it our way. That would be so much fun. I've been seeing that there's like there's like chat there's like AI uh, podcast reviews. I want one. I want one. Send it to us at Luke Braun NFL at Ross Jacksonola. Uh, we appreciate you very much for being here and to all you everydayers for checking us out and for making us a part of your day every single day here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Make sure you come back tomorrow. Uh, you're going to get, uh, of course, our good friends, uh, James and Chris. We're going to be breaking down all the biggest stories, power rankings, all that good stuff uh, here as Locked On NFL continues to roll along every single Monday through Friday here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.